Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Good evening, good evening once again, everybody. Good evening to you all. I bless you all today in the name of Jesus. I bless you all today by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I cover you all today with the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. This is another wonderful Sunday. Good evening, everyone out there. Hallelujah. You are all shining. You are all beautiful. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. Now let us pray. We need to pray today because, you know, the time we are now is a very, very crucial time. Very important time. It's a time that we cannot really, really, um, we cannot understand. You know, if you are not in the realm of the Spirit, you can't understand the time we are now. Amen. So let us pray. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for all you have been doing in our lives. We thank you for all you have been doing. We thank you for where you took us from. We thank you for where we are right now. And above it all, we thank you for where you are taking us. Almighty Jehovah, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your lovely kindness. Father, all we can say these days is to say thank you. Is to say thank you because we know that before we imagine anything, you have done it. While we are praying, you are listening to us. That is why you are a glorious God. That is why you are a wonderful God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. So once again, my name is Pastor Mrs. Eunice Sage of Jesus Power Assembly of All Nations at number 15. Then the Monday 16 way, 9,000 gains in Belgium. Hallelujah. The God of our salvation is with you all as a mighty, terrible one as you listen to me today. Amen. Your lives will never be the same again. Pay attention and listen very well so that you will not be a victim of what is going on in the world today. Hallelujah. And uh, I want to uh, use this opportunity to let everyone know that Jesus is coming soon, like in promise. Hallelujah. We are in the end time and Jesus is coming soon and it's coming very soon. Hallelujah. How, how much have we prepared? How are we prepared to really receive him? Amen. Glory be to God. So my topic today, my topic today is a very, very, it's, it's a straight topic. Amen. It's a straight topic which I name destroying the power of Bezebok. Hallelujah. Destroying the power of Bezebok. Glory be to God. What is Bezebok? Bezebok is the spirit of flies, evil spirits. Bezebok is an evil spirit. Prince of demons. The prince of all demons. Bezebok is the prince of all demons. To the people out there, it's a strong spirit. But to we, who know who we are in Christ, is the, is, is, is the least spirit, is the spirit that even the words of our mouth crush down. The prince of all demons. So destroying the prince of all demons is my topic today. Hallelujah. Who is this Bezebok? What is this Bezebok? Bezebok spirit is a very bad spirit. Bezebok spirit is a spirit that is, that is, you know, that is just around a lot of places today. But today I will address it. And we'll put it where it belongs. Hallelujah. So today, I'm going to be uh, taking us to the book of Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. We are going to take our uh, reading from verse 22 to 37. We read it also in the, in the service today. And if you were in the service today and you are listening to this broadcast, please, there was no time to really elaborate on it detail today in the church. So you don't just have to turn it off and say, oh, I already listened to it in the service. No, you have not heard it all. So if you were in the church today, if you were in the church today and you, you, you heard me talk about this, amen, you know during the service we have time for everything. 
time is set apart for praise, for worship, for, for, for you know, for message and, and, and for deliverance and for everything. So we don't have time. But now I have time to elaborate on it. So please, if you were in the service today and you have already listened, don't turn it off. Listen to it to the last. Amen. So that it will help you. Glory be to God. What you heard in the service today was just a summary. I have to summarize everything, you know, to, to, to make sure that, you know, our papa take over the rest service for deliverance. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And you all know what happened today. You all saw what happened today. Ah, the service today was wonderful. The service today was, was electric everywhere. The service today was so powerful. We thank God for the Holy Spirit. We thank God for the power of Jesus. We thank God for the name of Jesus that he has given to us to use. We thank God for the blood of Jesus that we can use and principalities will go down. We thank God for the name of Jesus that when we call that name, demonic spirit, spirit of Bezebog, every power in the air, in the land, in the sea, under the water, Marine powers, every agent of darkness in that era, they will, they will submit. The name of Jesus is powerful. It's a mighty strong tower. Hallelujah. Anyone that runs into the name of Jesus Christ is saved. Glory be to God. We saw how the name of Jesus Christ delivers a lot of people today in the service. We saw how the name of Jesus Christ, you know, destroy the works of the devil today. We saw how the name of Jesus Christ, you know, uh, uh, was really manifested today. Glory be to God Almighty. Glory, glory. In fact, my greatest joy and my happiness is that each time we come together, the name of Jesus is always disgracing the power of darkness. Hallelujah. Where there is light, darkness cannot struggle. Where there is light, darkness cannot dwell. Hallelujah. I say, let the light of God come upon you today as you listen in Jesus' name. Now, destroying the spirit of Bezebub. Let's go. Book of Matthew, chapter 12. The book of Matthew, like I told you, if you were in the service today, don't turn it off. Listen to it to the end. Amen. And don't forget to give us your like. Don't forget to give us your comments. Hallelujah. Your likes and your comments, they miss a lot. Amen. They miss a lot. Glory be to God. They miss a lot. Give us your like. Amen. Give us your comments. And uh, when you like good things, when you like good messages, that is direct from the throne of God, that is how you will be appreciated before God as well. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go. The book of Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. From verse 22. Now, what am I trying to portray today? Before we start to destroy that spirit, I want to say something to, 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 to most people that will be watching. And I want to say something to the whole world, all over the world, everywhere, wherever you are, anywhere you are listening to this broadcast from, listen very well. Amen. There are, there, there, there's a lot of saying these days. Many people, you know, they are, they are, they are, they are castigating. They are, they, are, they are just against servants of God. They are against ministers of God. They don't want the work of God to move ahead. They are doing everything to make sure that they stop the work of God. They are doing everything to make sure that they, 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 the work of God does not have a headway. But I have good news, you know, for... Uh, 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 everyone. The good news is this. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ came to set the captives free and he has brought good news to the world. And the good news is that Jesus said he will build his church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, there is this problem and this uh, uh, world and these things that is just going on all over the world, all over the world. Many people they don't want to they don't want to 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 go to church again because they believe that oh the power in the church is, is witchcraft power the power the servants of God are using is witchcraft the power that that pastor is using is witchcraft the power that one is using is witchcraft hallelujah glory be to God Almighty because of that a lot of people. They don't want to go to church. Even if there are some that when they get to church, they don't want to participate in everything. They think, oh, everything done in the church is witchcraft. They think everything done in that, in that, in that scenario is witchcraft. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Jesus came to set the captives free. Jesus came to liberate people. Jesus came to bring out people from the merry clay. Jesus came to bring out people from the pit. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. Jesus came to bring the oppressed back to life. Jesus came.
to bring those that are oppressed of the devil, give them life. Bring them out of that oppression and give them life. Jesus came to cast out devils from the lives of people. So people out there that does not know spiritual things, that are just gambling their mouth into the things that they don't know. Ah, that pastor is using witchcraft. Ah, that pastor is using uh, 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 money power. Hey, that pastor is using that. That pastor is using that. That pastor is using that. Now, I have word for people like this. I have word for people like this. If you are, and these things are commonly found among pastors, before people can be castigating pastors, before ordinary people can be talking against pastors, it started from the pastors. It started from pastors. It started from pastors. Whereby pastors will gather his members in the church and begin to tell them about another pastor. Begin to begin to encourage them, encourage them to, to disrespect another pastor. Begin to tell their own member that this pastor is using witchcraft. Begin to tell their own member, don't go to that church. That pastor is using witchcraft. Who has made you a judge? Who has made you a judge? Any pastor that is in that business, imagine, pastors these days, they will gather their members, they will begin to tell their members, don't go to that church. Ah, what are you looking for in that church? That church is using witchcraft. That pastor is using witchcraft. That pastor is using witchcraft. What do you know? What do you know? The pastor using witchcraft, if you do not have power to operate in your past, in your church, does not mean somebody else will not have the power. What you do not have as a pastor, don't condemn it in another pastor. If you are a pastor, you are operating, you know, you are operating without power. If you are a pastor, you are operating without power. There is no power in your church. There is no, there is no manifestation of the power of God in your church. And you see another pastor demonstrating God's power to set the captives free. You begin to say it's witchcraft. If it's witchcraft, it's not for you to judge. Leave that pastor for God. Hallelujah. Leave that pastor for God. Face your own. If you cannot operate in power, close your church and begin to turn it to supermarket. There are a lot of supermarkets that people go. In supermarket, people talk. People can only talk. Even in supermarket, you hear music. You hear music. People hang, 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 hang music. Hang uh, 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 amplify, amplify on the on, on the wall. You hear music. You sing along with it. In the supermarket, you talk. In the supermarket, you can shake your body to dance. Everything happens. But deliverance doesn't take place in supermarket. So if you are a servant of God, if you are a pastor and you do not have power to operate to set the captives free in your church, you close your mouth. Stop talking. Stop talking of what you don't know. If you don't have power to operate. If you don't have power to set those that are oppressed, if you don't have power to lose those that are bound, if you don't have power to, 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 to you know, to heal the sick in your church, close it or just turn it to a supermarket. Turn it to a normal supermarket. Because any pastor that is not operating in the power of the Holy Ghost, any pastor that is not operating in power, because that's why Jesus Christ said, Behold, I've given you power. Jesus has given you power. The power is not just to talk. The power is to demonstrate. He said, you shall trample upon serpent and scorpion. It shall by no means hurt you. What does that mean? It means that the people that are coming to your church, it means that the people, your members, many of them will be possessed. Many of them will be sick. Many of them will have one affliction or the other. Hallelujah. Many people have many situations. That is why they go to church because they want Jesus to heal them. They go to church because they want Jesus to take away that oppression. They go to church because they want that satanic uh, attack to be stopped. They go to church because they want that nightmare to stop. People go to church because they want a change of life. People go to church because they are tired of Satan's oppression in their life. So when they are in your church as a pastor and you don't have the power to deliver them, you just think that just coming and hearing the word of God alone is enough. No, no, Jesus demonstrated it. The Bible says everywhere Jesus went, he was doing good. He was healing the sick. If Jesus healed the sick and you are in ministry as a pastor, it is your duty to heal the sick. If Jesus casted demons out of people, if you are a pastor, it is your duty to cast out demons from people. If Jesus made the dumb to speak, if you are a pastor, it is your duty to have the power to make the dumb to speak. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says, as Christ is, so are we. As 
Christ is, so are we. And Jesus has given us the power. He has given us the power. He gave us the power to trample the serpent and scorpions. What does that mean? That simply means that anyone oppressing your members in the church, Jesus said he has given you power as a pastor to cast that demons out. So if you cannot get that power and you don't have it to operate, and another pastor is operating on that power, stop your big mouth. Stop your big mouth. Don't castigate pastors that are doing, that are, that are healing the sick, that are doing deliverance, casting out demons. You as a pastor, because today I'm talking about pastor. Remember, my topic is destroying the spirit of Bezebog. The spirit of Bezebog that has occupied a lot of people today. And today I'm concentrating on pastors. It blows my mind that if you are truly called by God, you don't have to condemn another pastor because we are supposed to be serving one God. Our God is not two, it's one. And the Bible says the Spirit of God bears witness with our spirit. So if you carry the Spirit of God, if you carry the Holy Spirit, you will not have, this, you will not have the mind to be judged. You don't need to judge. You leave every situation for God. If you are a pastor, as a pastor, you know, nothing is happening in your church. Nothing is happening in your church. All you... Praise is good. Worship is good. So, a, a, a churches that are praising and worshiping is a powerful thing. It is a very powerful thing. It's not a bad thing at all. It is not a bad thing. But it does not end there. Jesus did not just praise with the people and worship with them and leave them. He went, he went, he, he went with, he went in detail with them. He went in detail with them. When you see anyone that is oppressed by the devil, that is how he casted the demons out of the people and they ran into the pig. They ran into the pigs. When a demon lives a life of a person, the person will be free. You as a pastor, you don't believe, you don't believe in what God is doing in the life of another pastor through deliverance. You said you will say the, 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 the pastors are using witchcraft power. Pastors that are doing deliverance, they are using witchcraft power. Pastors that are healing people, they are using witchcraft power. Hey, so, in your church, if you have, for example, 200 members in your church, so does that mean the 200 members, they are not possessed with demons? Does that mean that, that of that 200 members, there is no one person or two that is possessed with demons? All of them is clean. They are all clean to worship God in your church. That is why you don't do deliverance. Ah, the devil is a liar. This idea of condemnation, this idea of pastors condemning other pastors, it has to stop. It has to stop. The power you don't have does not mean another pastor doesn't have it. If you don't have power to heal people, it doesn't mean that another power, another pastor does not have it. If you don't have the power to deliver people, it does not mean that another pastor does not have it. What you don't have does not mean that somebody else does not have it. It doesn't mean that somebody else does not have it. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Glory be to God. This idea of pastor coming together Gathering their members, begin to tell their members, don't go, don't, don't, don't believe that pastor. Don't listen to that pastor. He's using witchcraft. He's using witchcraft. Now let us see something in the in the in the in the in the, in the Bible. And you that is talking, how many times have you accused a witch doctor? Witch doctors that you know, people go to witch doctors. Witch doctors use witchcraft power. Witch doctors they use powers from the kingdom of darkness to oppress the people. You never want to castigate them. You never want to talk against them. You never want them. You are talking about pastors that is delivering people. Any pastor that is against deliverance, that pastor himself needs deliverance. That pastor himself needs deliverance. But because for the fact that you are a pastor does not mean that you know what you are doing. For the fact that you are a pastor does not mean that you know this word, the word of God. No. There are people who call themselves. Pastors that call themselves, they are the ones that are causing confusion here and there today in the Christendom. Pastors that call themselves. God did not call them. They call themselves. They are the ones causing commotions here and there. They are the ones causing problems here and there. They are the ones that we know the ones that, that are using witchcraft power. They are the ones that we know that that church is not good. They are the ones that for them no pastor is good. Unless pastor that is like them. The only pastor that is good is pastor that is like them. Pastor that does not cast out demons, that is like them. If you are a pastor, a pastor 
that is called by God, you must have the gift of deliverance. I know that everybody has their own gift. Every ministers of God have their gift. But this particular one is a general one that God must give to anyone that he called. Because God knows that the members you are going to have, they will need deliverance. God knows that the members you are going to have, he is not going to bring people that are already delivered to you. He is going to bring people that are oppressed. He is going to bring people that have situations to you. So every pastor that is called by God must have the gift of deliverance before your normal gift. Every pastor, there are some that are called to teach. There are some that are called to preach. There are some that are called to... But this particular gift of deliverance and healing is with every pastor that God called. Hallelujah. If God called you, he gives you that gift so that if your members is sick, you can heal them through the power of the Holy Spirit. Your member of a church cannot be sick and you are, you are, you are calling another pastor, come and heal my... No. If God called you, he equipped you. That is the equipment you are talking about. He equipped you with everything. He gave you discernment spirit. He gave you healing power. He gave you, you know, every, all what it takes. He equipped you. He comes like a... He's, 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 as a package. He equipped you to carry on the work of God. God is not the author of confusion. The work of God comes in a package. He just equipped you. That is why he said, why you were in your mother's womb? I knew you. I called you. And I equipped you. He equipped you. Nothing is missing and nothing is broken. He equipped you. You cannot say you are a pastor and you don't have the, 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 the spirit of deliverance or you don't have the power of deliverance or the power of healing that is why you see in many churches today every weekend they go they go to 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 to, to, to cemetery they go and bury their member they go and bury their member before a member is sick just come ahead it will kill a christian can you imagine and yet they are in the church just headache headache kill christians these days and such christians they have pastor such Christians, they have they, 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 they have pastors, they go to church. A, a person that is in the church having nightmare, 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 nightmare on a constant basis. Nightmare, one year, two years, three years, four years, and he's going to church. If possible, it's even a choir in your church. He's singing. He's having nightmare. He can't sleep. He's having nightmare before he came to your church, to start your church. Now, he started going to your church one year, two years, three years, four years. He's still having that same nightmare. Nothing is changing. Before you know it, out of, you know, too much thinking, he died. And you have a pastor. You, you are a pastor. You are a pastor. You could not cast out that spirit, that demonic oppression, that power that is making that person to have this constant nightmare. Cast that power out in the name of Jesus Christ. You could not do it. Because you don't trust yourself. You don't trust yourself. You could not do it. So if that person now leave your church and go to another church, and the power of God in that church begin to deliver that person, within a short time, the nightmare the person used to have, you don't even see it again. The life of the person begin to change. Then you say that pastor is using witchcraft power. You say the pastor is using witchcraft power. Remember, that person has been with you for many years. You could not do nothing. His suffering is silent. You are not born again to suffer. You are not born again to know things that you used to you, that used to befall you. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. Everything becomes new. When you are in Christ, everything about you becomes new. When you are in Christ, that nightmare must give way. Because when light comes, darkness must give way. So if you are a pastor that is operating in the power of the Holy Ghost, through deliverance, there is no, your members that will begin to experience that light. There will be a shift in the realm of the spirit. Those that were having nightmare before they came to the church, sooner or later the nightmare go. Those that used to have sexual molestation in the, in the, in the, in the dream, sooner or later they don't see it anymore. They don't see it anymore. Hallelujah. They don't see it anymore. When you have an encounter with the power of God, things will begin to change in your life. So, if you as a pastor, you begin to think that, oh, this person now, he's no more, he's no more in my church, now he has gone to another, another church, and you begin to see changes. Why don't you go to God and say, ah, God, 
Ah, this person, he just left my church and now things are okay. Is there anything wrong with me? Why don't you humble yourself and go to God and let God show you the things that need to be done? And now God to lead you. Hallelujah. The Bible says anyone that asks, receive. Instead of condemning. Instead of condemning. You are condemning a deliverance minister. Anyone that condemns a deliverance minister, any pastor that condemns a deliverance minister, need deliverance. And I have, I have come to notice and realize that those pastors that are condemning deliverance, how can you say you are called by God? You are condemning deliverance. How can your people that God gave to you, how can they achieve where God wants them to get to? How can they achieve their goal in life if they are not delivered? You must be delivered from where you are coming from. Imagine many people are coming from a very, very demonic background. Many people are coming from satanic background. Many people are coming from a background that worship idols. And that idols, you know, they have been worshipping it in that family. Many people are coming from background that does not know God. And all of a sudden, they will just get to church and just say, I give my life to Christ and that's all. No! After confessing Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then you go to deliverance. That is why the Bible says that upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. Where, there, where is Zion? In the church. Is it upon Mount Zion? There shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness and then you will begin to possess your possession. So it means that if there is no deliverance, you cannot live a holy life. And if you cannot live a holy life, you cannot possess what God has for you. The, 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 these things, you know, they are real. They are real. Upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. There shall be deliverance. That is the word of God. That is the word of God. Upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. And there shall be holiness. Then, you will begin to possess your possession. Why are many people failing today? They are not possessing. Because they are not delivered. They are in the church. A lot of people, they are giving up today. A lot of people, they are, they are getting fed up of going to church today. A lot of people, they are discouraged. Some people will tell you when you evangelize to them, they will tell you, forget. I have been in the church for the past 10 years. Nothing is changing in my life. I have been in the church for donkey years. Nothing is changing in my life. You are a pastor. People are in your church. Nothing is changing in their life. Their situation is not changing. That should be a big concern to you. That should be a very, very big concern to you. Because Jesus, God, has given them to you to watch over their souls. You are to watch over their soul. You are to help them in the area of deliverance. The moment a person is delivered, the moment a member is delivered, the moment a particular person is delivered, things will begin to go well for you. This will begin to go well for you. The reason why things don't go well for people is the demonic power that is oppressing them. When a person is oppressed by demonic power, nothing will go well. If, for example, a person that is oppressed, that is, that is, that is molested sexually in the dream, a person that has a spiritual husband, a person that has a spiritual wife, tell me what will that person achieve? If you have a spiritual husband as a woman, you won't get a husband. You won't get a husband. You can be having children here and there. You won't get a husband. Because that spiritual husband will make sure any man that is coming your way, he stop them. That spiritual husband will make sure any man that is coming your way, he will allow you to have a relationship. He will even allow you to have children safe. But to say get married, he will not allow because he's married to you already. So tell me, many of these kind of people, people, ladies, women who have spiritual husband, they go to church. So if you are a pastor of such people in the church, you will come and tell me deliverance is not necessary. You will come and tell me uh, the, 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 the deliverance, no, no, nobody needs deliverance. Jesus has done it all. As a pastor, I will prove you wrong today that that is a big lie from the pit of hell. You better go to God and ask him if he called you. And if he called you, maybe you have missed it somewhere, go to him in prayer and fasting. He will forgive you. He's a very wonderful God. If you are a man, you have a spiritual wife, they will not allow you to marry. That is why you see many men, to marry becomes a problem for them. Because that spiritual wife is attached to them. But they, may, they, they can allow them to have children. But for them to settle and enjoy their marriage, no. Because he has taken a in your life. 
spiritual husband or spiritual wife. And many of these people that have this spiritual husband, spiritual wife, they go to church. They have key positions in the church. Many of them are ushers in the church. Many of them are choir singers in the church. Many of them are deacon and deaconesses in the church. Many of them are, they, are do, they, they have key positions in the church. Many of these people that are oppressed by spiritual wife and spiritual husband. How can you have a spiritual spouse? A spiritual wife or a spiritual husband, and you are you, you and, 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 and you have a key position in the church. A pastor could not see that. He could not see it. You have a key position in that church. And if things are not working, after many years you give up, you say Christianity is not a or if for eventually you leave that church, you go to another church. And they, 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 they. it happens that that minister, that pastor is a deliverance minister. He delivers you from that spiritual husband or spiritual wife. Then your former pastor will be saying it's witchcraft. Because he didn't have the power to deliver you. I am here to challenge any pastor from anywhere. Be you from the east, west, north, south of this world. Anywhere you are. If you are called by God, you must have. The power of deliverance. Quote me anytime, anywhere. I am here to challenge any pastor, no matter how big you are, no matter how rich you are, no matter how popular you are, no matter how, how whatever you are, no matter, no matter, no matter. I am here. Stop condemning the ministers of God that are doing deliverance. These are the genuine ones because they are setting the captives free. These are the ones. Because that is what Jesus Christ came to do. That is what Jesus did. That is what Jesus did. The Bible says, as he is, so are we. You can have your gift as a minister. You can have another gift as a minister. But this one is a general one. It's a general one. It's like many people. Everyone don't eat the same food. Everybody have different food that they eat. But there is one general thing that we have. Water. Water is general for everybody. Nobody can live without water. You can never live without water. You need water to survive. It's a general, no matter how strong you say you are, you need water to drink or to use to cook. It's a general thing. It's the same way in ministry. In ministry, if God called you, you will, it will, you, you have your gift. He gives you your own gift. Your gift must be any gift to preach about prosperity. Your gift must be teaching. Your gift might be preaching to preach to be your gift might be but there is this general one you must have that God give to his people the gift of deliverance because that is why he called you so that you can deliver the people God have no hand on this earth when he called you he put his power in your hand to heal the people he uses your hand he has no hand on this earth he uses your hand as a pastor he has no mouth on this earth he uses your mouth as a pastor to deliver the people, to heal the people. Or you want to tell me it was during the time of Jesus Christ alone that people were sick? You want to tell me that it was only the time of Jesus 2,000 years ago that people were oppressed of, the, of, of demons? That after all, Jesus has finished and he has gone. He left and he gave us another powerful force to continue the job, which is called the Holy Ghost. He gave it to us to continue until he comes. He gave it to us. He said, behold, I've given you power. Power. So if you are a pastor, you are not operating with power. It means close your church. Close your church and go and start another thing. Go and start a boutique or go and start a supermarket. Because the difference between a church and a supermarket is power. In supermarket, like I said before, people talk. You can go there and be talking. In supermarkets, people people play music. In supermarket, people dance. No problem. But the only thing that cannot happen in supermarket is the demonstration of power, because that place is made for something else to be selling and to be everything can take place. So it's the same thing. The church is mainly for the demonstration of God's power. To bring glory to God. After the people hear the word of God. After they have praise. 
after they have sung, after they have worshipped, after they have prayed, after they've heard the word of God, then you deliver them. You deliver them. Because many people, they are in church today oppressed by the devil. Many people today, they are, they are in the church today. They can't sleep at night. Every night they have sexual molestation. Many people today, they cannot, they can't sleep at night. Before they start sleeping, they will be eating in their dream. Many people today, they feed them in their dream. That is food of affliction. That is not a, it's not a good food. That is the, the planted things to monitor your life. There are people in the, in the, today in the church, they can't sleep at night. Before they start to sleep, people will be pursuing them. Some will be pursuing them with cutlass. Some with gun. Some with different ammunition. Pursuing them in their dream. They can't sleep. Many Christians today, they find it difficult to sleep because of what they are going through. And yet they go to church. They have a pastor. The pastor will say, it's not, it's, not, it's not a deliverer. People are dying every day. Christians are dying every day in the church. They are dying every day. Jesus said, Behold, I've given you power. Destroy the works of the devil with that power. Any member that is oppressed by the devil, destroy it. So if you are hearing, deliverance is happening in that church. God is using that man of God. God is using that woman of God. God is using that servant of God. Stop condemnation. Stop condemnation. As you are talking, you also need deliverance. You that is talking, you need deliverance. Be delivered. Is, is everything okay with you? Is everything okay with you? Don't you know? You, don't you think you need deliverance? Don't you think deliverance has become things that people are, 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 are mocking at today? And that is what they need. As I was praying during this week, the Lord just told me. He said, my daughter, anything that is truly for him attracts Satan. Whatever is from God, Satan will want to contend against it. Satan will want to do everything to bring it down. But I have good news for the whole world. I have good news for the whole world. Jesus Christ, he said those that he called, he equips. And he said that he will be with those that he called till the end of time. He said he will not leave them and he will not forsake them. Pastors that are called by God, that are, that are healing people, that are delivering the, 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 the oppressed. God is marking you in heaven every day. God is giving you a plus every day. Don't listen to what people are saying, pastor. Pastors that are doing deliverance. Pastors that are destroying the idols that are stopping people not to make it in life. Continue. God is with you as a mighty, terrible one. And you pastors that are condemning those kind of things, get ready for the wrath of God. Because you are not called. If you are called, you will not say such a thing. You will not open your mouth. You never condemn a witch doctor. Witch doctors that are telling people. Imagine people that does not even have. A witch doctor will tell somebody, a poor woman, a poor man that does not even have a place to sleep. He will say, go and bring your only one child for sacrifice. That woman will be going. Go and bring only one child. Or is it not witch doctors that are telling people to sacrifice their, their mother? Have you seen a deliverance pastor that tells people to sacrifice their mother or their father or their child? But which doctors, they tell people, sacrifice your only child. They tell people, sacrifice your best, your best person in the family. Who do you love most in your family? Well, that is what which doctors do. You never, you, ne you never condemn those people. You never condemn those people. You are condemning those that God has called to, 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 to destroy the works of the devil so that they can have a good life. Just because of your evil belly, your evil thoughts, just because of jealousy, envy, just because you want to satisfy your belly, you want to satisfy that evil thought in your belly, you keep opening my Why Say it to other religions that are doing nasty things. Say it to unbelievers that are doing nasty things. You don't hold a pastor's matter as if pastors, as if deliverance pastors are your, they are your, they are your, they are your enemies. Pastors that are talking against deliverance pastors, I've never seen you talk about, which family are you from? Your parents worship idols. Your parents worship idols. You pastor. Your parents worship idols. Have you talked against the idols your parents worship? Have you talked
talk about the things. So now let's go to the Bible because I'm talking since I've not referred you. Let's go to the Bible very quickly. I'm not going to take most of your time. Matthew chapter 12. Please let us read it together. So pastors that are that are that are talking against servants of God that are doing deliverance. Many pastors these days, you know, what they are saying is mind blowing. We are in the end time. And you that is listening, you have to be careful. Be careful. Don't listen to pastors that have bad, bad, bad thoughts towards their fellow pastors that God is using. If you are a pastor and you are not, you are not, you are not experiencing the power of God to help your people, go to God. He will give it to you. And if you are not called by God, you are not ready, close your church and be selling clothes. Turn it to a boutique. People will come and buy. Let's go. The book of Matthew chapter 12, verse 22. I read. Then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil, blind and dumb, and he healed them. In so much that he blind and the blind dumb both spoke and saw. Let me read for you again. This is the miracle of our Lord Jesus Christ. You pastors that are saying that are against deliverance you pastors that are against deliverance you pastors that are talking against pastors that are doing deliverance hear the word of the lord i have the word of god for you today now i'm taking my proof text from the book of matthew chapter 12 from beginning 22 to 37 verse 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 22 then what then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him. Who healed him? Jesus healed him. Hallelujah. In so much that the blind and the dumb both spoke and saw. Here is a scenario. You can see what God is what what, what we are what we are reading here. The blind was brought to Jesus. The dumb was brought to Jesus. He healed them. He healed them. Jesus healed them. So as a pastor, you need to heal the people that are oppressed of the devil in your church. And if you cannot heal them, and they go to somewhere to be healed, stop talking against that pastor. If you can't because Jesus did it, so we have to do it. As Jesus is in heaven, so are we here. Equality of power. Equality of possession. Equality of everything. Hallelujah. He said, Behold, I go to my Father, but I'll give you something that is greater. He gave us the Holy Ghost to do amazing things. Is there anything the Holy Spirit cannot do? The Holy Spirit can raise the dead. The Holy Spirit can do anything. The Holy Spirit is a powerful force on this earth today that every pastor that is called by God is, 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 is carrying to bring liberation, to bring freedom, to bring liberty. So those that are oppressed of the devil. The Holy Spirit is a powerful force. So as a pastor, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you have to go for it. Hallelujah. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, I wonder who you are. I wonder who you are. Hallelujah. I wonder who you are. So if you don't have the Holy Spirit, definitely you, 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 are, you are just operating a cafe in your church. It's that, that is, you know, because the Holy Spirit is the administrator of the church. He is the one that heals the people as the people are coming, heal them. He take away their heaviness. Jesus Christ said, come unto me with your heavy load and I will give you rest. Jesus is in the church. So as you come with that nightmare, when you have an encounter with a servant of God that is called by God, that is operating with power, that nightmare must stop. If you are not getting things done well before and you come to the servant of God that carries power, your life must be changing. Hallelujah. So if you are in one church for years, nothing is changing. Nothing is changing. And because your pastor is telling you that that pastor don't go there, we hear that he's doing deliverance, the deliverance is not genuine. Be there and be suffering. Be there and be suffering. You are not doing anybody, you are doing yourself. You are in a church, nothing is happening to you. You are in a church, you are still eating in the dream. You are in the church, you are still having sex in the dream. You are in the church. People are pursuing you in the dream. They take the God's grace for you to wake up. You are in the church. Nothing, nothing is working for you. Yet your pastor will be telling you, don't go to that pastor. Don't go to that pastor. He's doing deliverance. You are hearing that there is deliverance in another church. They say, don't go. He's using witchcraft power. Why? Because your pastor, the pastor belly is full of evil. The pastor belly is full of evil. He's full of evil. He's full of envy and jealousy. And you that is in, is without such a pastor. You are listening to a pastor. You are listening to what he's saying. Life is not good for you.
for you. You don't have the, you don't have what you want. You know, life is not good for you. Yet you see a place where mighty deliverance. You will see somebody, you know, going to a place. Deliverance take place. The demon that is tormenting that person leaves the person, and the person's life will begin to shine. Yet you as a pastor, you will tell that the other one in your church, don't go. Don't go there. That pastor is using witchcraft power. And you, you will begin to listen. You will begin to listen. Let me tell you. <laughs> it's not your pastor that is suffering. It is you. Because anyone that wears shoes knows where he's paining him or her. Let me tell you something, people of God. We don't have much time on this earth again. The little time that you have, go to where God will deliver you. Free you and you will enjoy your life in the Holy Ghost Grand Star. Don't listen to your pastor that is telling you that that pastor is using witchcraft. That pastor is using this. That pastor is using Don't listen. Your life is not okay. You are there and yet he's telling you. Okay, he said that pastor is not good. That pastor. Then you tell him, pastor, deliver me. And you, you say that pastor is not good. You say that pastor is using witchcraft. That is delivering people. You have been my pastor for many years. Please, you deliver me. You are also a pastor. Because you talk to your pastor like that. Tell your pastor to deliver you. And if your pastor cannot deliver you, please look for a deliverance ministry and go there. And be delivered. Jesus came to set the captives free. That is why he said in the book of Isaiah. He said, Shall, he said can the priest be delivered? Yes. The captive of the mighty must be delivered. So I don't know what is holding you bound in your father's house, in your mother's house. I don't know what is holding you bound from your foundation. When you have an encounter with the servant of God that carries fire in his bow, you will be free. You will be free. I say you will be free in the name of Jesus Christ. Now listen, we are still reading our Bible. Verse 22, the Bible says, the dog was brought to Jesus. The deaf was brought to Jesus. The blind was brought to Jesus. Jesus healed them. Now verse 23. And all the people were amazed and said, Is this the son of David? Let me take it again so that you will understand where I'm going. Verse 22. We are reading Matthew chapter 12 from verse 22 to 37. Then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil. It's the same thing that is happening today. Many people, they are going to church, but they are possessed with devils. They are possessed. Yet, the pastor cannot deliver them. And the pastor will not allow them to go to a church where they can be delivered. Is that not, is that, is that, is that not, is that, does that make sense? Hallelujah. Then was brought unto him one that was oppressed, oppressed with the devil, blind and dumb, and healed him. Insomuch that the blind, the blind, the blind and the dumb both spoke and saw. Verse 23. And all the people were amazed and said, is this not the son of David? 24. But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, this fellow does not cast out devils, but by the Bezebog, the priest of the devil. When others heard what Jesus was doing, how Jesus was casting out devils, how Jesus made the blind to see, how he made the dumb to speak, how he made the blind to see, how he was casting out devils, when the Pharisees, when they heard it, they said, don't mind him, we know him. We know him. Is that not the son of David? Is that not the son of David? Joseph, the son of David. We know him. Leave that guy. Leave that guy. Is that not the son of David? We know him. The power he's using is the prince of all devils. He's using witchcraft power. He's using satanic power. Don't believe him. Let us read it together. Let us read it together. Verse 24. But when the Pharisees heard it, what did they hear? When they hear what Jesus was doing, Jesus was casting out demons for people. Jesus was healing the sick. Jesus was making the blind to see when the Pharisees heard it in verse 24. But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, this fellow, which fellow Jesus, they said, this Jesus does not cast out devils, but by Bezebog, the priest of the devil. Bezebog, the, the priest of the devil. So they said, that the power Jesus is using is the spirit of the devil. That is what they were telling Jesus, the Pharisees. When they saw what Jesus was doing, it's the same thing that is going on today. A servant of God that God is using to set the captives free. To cast out devils from people. To cast out demons from people. To, 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 to give people life through the power of the Holy Ghost. Those pastors that does not, that call themselves, that cannot even operate in power, they say it's witchcraft, it's 
is witchcraft. So pastors that are that, that call themselves pastors that are condemning deliverance, these are the Pharisees. These are the Pharisees. Look at now, we are still reading. Verse 25, and Jesus knew their talks and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. Jesus knew what they were saying and Jesus said, Hey, you people, what is wrong with you? Devil cannot cast out devil. Any kingdom that is divided against itself cannot stand. It cannot stand. If I'm using the witchcraft power, I cannot also deliver somebody that is oppressed by witchcraft. That is a mission impossible. It's a mission impossible. The Bible says when the power from above comes, the one from below will give way. So if Jesus pray and cast out demons, it means that Jesus is operating from above. He's operating from above. So if any pastor is casting out demons, healing the sick, it means that pastor is operating from above. He's operating from above. So you pastor that could not even kill a fly in your church, cannot even heal a person in your church, come on headache in your church will kill the person. They will go and bury the person. Next week again, another person with stomach pain, you probably hear they say he died. It's new, new people that are coming. People are, people are coming as they are coming. And it's that the same way they are dying of sickness. That you will lay hand and cast out that devil of infirmity in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus answered them, any kingdom or a house divided against itself cannot stand. What does that mean? If you are a family person, if you are a family person, you know, you begin to quarrel among yourselves. You begin to fight yourself. That house cannot stand. Everyone fighting one another in the same house. You are in the house. Everyone is fighting each other. Every day the house will be on fire. It can't stand. That's what Jesus Christ said. The person that I'm praying for is oppressed by the devil. And you say that, Hi, Jesus, I carry the spirit of the devil. So how can I cast out that devil from the person? He said the house divided against itself cannot stand. So, I believe that we are getting somewhere right now. Now, verse 26. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? This is Jesus. So, the reason why I'm emphasizing on this is that deliverance pastors that people are against all over the world today, keep doing the good job that you are doing. Keep doing the good job that you are doing because they did it to Jesus. They did it to this what they did to Jesus. Jesus was casting out devils from people. He was healing the sick. Still, the Pharisees, they said it's using witchcraft power. They said it's using the spirit of the devil. Then Jesus now asks them, how can a kingdom that is divided against itself stand? How can Satan cast out Satan? If I'm using the spirit of Satan, so how can I cast out somebody that is oppressed by Satan? Jesus asks them in verse 26, now verse 27. And if I, by Bezebo, cast out devil, Jesus is talking. Because they're accusing me, it's the same way they're accusing men of God today, deliverance ministers today. The same way, don't go to that church, don't believe that pastor, he's using witchcraft power. But your talking will not stop what God is doing through that deliverance minister. Your talking will not stop it will not stop it. And you, pastor, or you, individual, or you that is condemning deliverance, you come for deliverance. You need it. You need deliverance. Because the spirit talking inside of you is not normal. It's not normal. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ said, my sheep, they know my voice. They hear my voice. He said, the voice of a stranger, they will not follow. So, you that is talking is because you are a stranger. You are a stranger. Those that are enjoying the benefit, imagine, imagine somebody, the doctor will say that you have cancer. That person has one month to live. And the person will come to a deliverance minister, will come to a deliverance church, and that person will be healed of cancer. Then now, one year has passed, that person is still living. Two years have passed, that person is still living. Three years, four years, five years. Oh, yeah. So you will come and say that, you know, it is because. God is still giving you time to repent. There are a lot of people today that doctor has written off. But through the power of deliverance, 
They are living today. The doctor will say this person has just five days to live. When he finds his way to the church of God, to a deliverance, because that, that, that sickness is caused by demonic thing. And that's why Jesus was casting them out from them. If that spirit that is causing it is removed, you will be free. You will see that you won't live five days. You will live more, many, 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 many years. How many people today are testimonies to that? Say, doctor will tell them they will, not, they will not live to see that year. They, 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 they are going to die. They will carry with all the paper, with all the doctor's report. They go to the servant of God. They come to the church. They go to the church. Many of them, we have them here in our church. I'm on the air. Many of our members, they will be listening to me as well. Cancer, God have healed cancer in this church. God have healed HIV in this church. And God is still doing amazing things. God has brought back broken homes in this church. God, God is just doing amazing things. If you are in this church, that nightmare cannot continue. It can't continue. If you are in this church, the works of the enemy cannot prevail over your life. Because here is a pure deliverance. You come with cast out that devil that is oppressing your life. So if somebody is saying, oh, uh, this, that, 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 you know, imagine. It's because you are still having life. God is giving you grace to live. That is why you are still talking. To say, by the time something will hold you in your throat, then they will say, it's oppression. And that oppression, you may not survive it as a pastor or as an individual. You will know where there is deliverance. Me, you will be running to a deliverance church. Pastor, deliver me. Hear me pray for me. It's because you are still talking. That is why you have mouth to be talking. You have mouth to be talking. By the time you go through a situation whereby you look at doctors have failed in all their endeavor to help you, they have failed. You see that everything has failed you, you will look for a deliverance pastor by force that will deliver you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Deliverance pastors need to be respected. Deliverance pastors need to be, they need to be, they need to be honored. They need to be honored. Because they are not doing their own thing. They are doing your own. Look at what Jesus. Jesus did not come to do his own thing. Jesus Christ was doing the things for the people. He was casting out devils from the people. Yet, the people, the Pharisees were against him. They said he was using witchcraft power. So if you are from Jesus, expect people to say the same thing to you. Because as Christ is, so are we. Hallelujah. So every deliverance minister that they are, they are against, count it all joy because they did it to Jesus. Read it. Matthew, 10, Matthew chapter 12 from verse 22. So, so now, now, we are on 27. And if I, by Bezebub, cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. 27, 28. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. Hallelujah. What is God saying here? If he cast out devils, when he cast out, it means that the kingdom of God has come to you. That kingdom, Satan does not want you to have it. Satan does not want you to have that kingdom. So he's doing everything to make sure that the kingdom of God does not come to you. He's making sure to see that you don't experience the kingdom of God. When demons are taken out of your life, when you are free from satanic attack, the kingdom of God has come to you. You will begin to experience the good things of God. You will begin to experience life in abundance. You will begin to experience joy unspeakable. You will begin to experience the peace that no one can give. Only Jesus Christ can give. Look at what he said. Hallelujah. Look at what he said here. He said that if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. Unto you. Don't be deceived. Don't allow pastors to deceive you. Don't allow people to deceive you. Look for a deliverance minister to deliver you, to set you free from that, from that, from that demonic attack, to set you free from that sexual attack, to set you free and bring the kingdom of God to you. Look for that servant of God. Don't listen to your pastor, a pastor that has been pastoring you, that cannot even deliver you. You are, you are in the church. You are not experiencing the kingdom of God. Look at what the Bible says. He said, if I cast out devil, Jesus Christ is talking because they were accusing him. He said, if I cast out devil, 
In verse 27, if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come to you. Don't you want to experience the kingdom of God? That is why the Bible says, upon Zion, it means that when you are delivered in the church, then you will begin to live a holy life. Then you begin to possess everything. You begin to possess everything. That is the kingdom of God. That is the kingdom of God. Then the kingdom of God has come unto you. Experience the kingdom of God here on earth. You are not meant to suffer. You are not meant to, 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 to go through pain. You can be going through pain when you are in the wrong place. When the wrong pastor is over your life, then you go through, you go through pain. But when you have an encounter with the pastor that Jehovah God himself called and equipped, the kingdom of God will come upon you. Will come to you. In the kingdom of God, there is joy. In the kingdom of God, there is peace. In the kingdom of God, there is prosperity. In the kingdom of God, there is healing. In the kingdom of God, there is, there, there is long life. In the kingdom of God, there is salvation. In the kingdom of God, there is happiness. That's what Jesus is saying. Hallelujah. That is why you see, when many people, when they are delivered, they will begin to sleep well. They will feel light. They will begin to experience everywhere they have failed before. They will begin to possess it. They will begin to have good things because the kingdom of God has come to them. And that kingdom, Satan does not want you to have it. That is why Satan is telling you, don't believe deliverance ministers. That is why he's telling you. That is why he's telling you that deliverance minister is using occultic power. He's using satanic power. Which, which deliverance minister who use occultic power can cast out Satan from somebody? Have you not read in the Bible where Satan, where, that, where, where, where a demon possessed man, he said to them, he said, Peter I know, Jesus I know, who are you? And he fought, he fought, the, 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 he fought that, that. So, if you are not operating in the power of the Holy Spirit, you cannot cast out devils. Don't make mistake about it. So if you are casting out devils, it means that the power of God that is from above is in you. It's in you. So members, people that are suffering, don't listen to what people are saying. You know what you are going through. Look for a deliverance minister to deliver you. People are looking for a solution. They go to witch doctors. People are looking for a solution. They go to the married kingdom. People are looking for solutions, they go to witches' coven. To go and be looking for solutions. And their problems get worse. Why don't you try Deliverance Church? The next church that you can go is just a normal church where they can praise. Praise and praise and praise and praise and praise. Praise and praise and praise. Where all the occultic members, where members, all the occultic, there are a lot of churches these days. When I just watch them, I laugh. You see how people are dancing. These people, Many of them are in different courts. Many of them are in different, you know, they are not looking for a church that cannot even threaten them. They are looking for a, a pastor that cannot threaten them, that cannot cast out even a fly in the church. They are looking for such church. They fool them. They begin to tell their members, come to this church. Come, come to that. Come, come. Because they, them, 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 they are, they are there. You have a key position in the church. You are in different court. And you are comfortable in that church. And begin to tell others, don't go to that deliverance church. Don't go to that deliverance. Don't go to that pastor. He's using witchcraft. Come to our church. Come to our church. Because you are scared. Because you are scared. You are scared. Because you know that where you are, the pastor cannot kill a fly. Where you are, you are even the one controlling the pastor in the realm of the spirit. So you are telling the, the, the other members to come. But where there is fire and where there is power, where your power will be disgraced and exposed, you tell people, don't go there. That pastor is using witchcraft. Don't go there. Don't go there. So you that is listening, you know what you want. You know what you want. You know what you want. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are almost standing up now. Verse 29, or else how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except first bind the strong man and then he spoil his goods, he spoil his house. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me is scattereth abroad. Verse 31, wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven. This one is very, very important. 
for every pastor that called themselves because any pastor that is talking against deliverance those ones they call themselves they are very easy to, to, to know the Bible says by their fruit you know them by their fruit you know them if a pastor can sit down or if a person can be condemning deliverance if somebody can be condemning deliverance talking against deliverance it's because that person has not experienced God's power it's because that person just put himself in that position by himself. God has no hand in it. Because Jesus said here, every sin you commit can be forgiven. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost, what does that mean? It means that the works that the Holy Spirit is using the servant of God to do, and you are condemning it, you say that it's using witchcraft power. You say that it's using the, the, the kingdom of darkness power. God is telling you today that he will never forgive you and your generation will not be forgiven. It's not my word, read it. He said every sin that a man will commit can be forgiven. It means that if you sin against God, God will forgive you. If you sin against Jesus, he will forgive you. If you sin against the servant of God, God will forgive you. But if you sin against the Holy Spirit, what is the Holy Spirit? When a person is blind and a servant of God pray for that person, cast out the, the spirit of blindness and that person is see that is the work of the Holy Spirit and if you not come and say the pastor is using witchcraft it means that you are blaspheming against the Holy Spirit you are blaspheming against the Holy Spirit so God is telling you today God is telling you today that that sin he will never forgive you in this world or in the world to come oh my God this is this, this, this is not something that so, but many people today are suffering. Many pastors today, they are suffering because of what they are talking against a servant of God that carried deliverance power. Look at what the, imagine, Jesus said he will not share his glory with anybody. He's, he will not share his glory with anybody. God does not play with testimony. Testimony is the power of God. Testimony is, is what brings glory to him. So if you, as a pastor, or as anybody, God will heal somebody. God will deliver somebody from demonic oppression. God will make somebody that, you know, be, begin to do amazing things in the life of somebody. The Spirit of God will be changing somebody through a servant of God that he called. Then you will be saying that servant of God is using witchcraft power. It means you are giving the glory to the Satan. You are giving the glory to, the, to, 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 to demons. And God said he will not share his glory with anyone. The glory must be given to him. The glory must be given back to God. When the blind see, that is the power of the Almighty God. When the lame walk, that is the power of the Almighty God. When demon oppress, when the demon leave the person through deliverance power or through, through deliverance ministration, that is the power of God. The glory must be given to him. And God is telling everyone today that those that are talking against the work of the miracle of God, that you are blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. Let me read it to you once again. Maybe that you don't know what you are doing. Many pastors today, not until they confess, they have no peace. Because servants of God, that give himself completely to God to be used, to set the captives free. And he's freeing them. You are there, talking with your mouth. He's using witchcraft power. He's using the marine power. He's using that power. He's using that power. What can witchcraft power do in the face of the Holy Ghost? What can the witchcraft power do in the place of the power of the Almighty God? What can witchcraft power do? What can they do? What can they do? Hallelujah. Look at what Jesus said here. He said, we are for in verse 31. Go and read it and study it for yourself. Matthew 12, 31. He said, wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy against all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven you. Talk against God, God will forgive you. Talk against the church, he will forgive you. Talk against the pastor, the servant of God, God will forgive you. Talk against even Jesus himself, he will forgive you. Now, look at what Jesus will never ever forgive he said, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven men. Why? Because Jesus was healing the sick. He made the blind to see. He, 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 he cast out demons, the oppressed. He, he was casting out demons. Those that were oppressed of the devil, he was casting them out. He was healing them. Cast out demons and they fell into the pigs. The pigs ran into the water. They, they, you know, he made the, the
the, 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 the blind to see, he made the dead to rise, he made doing all kind of miracles to bring joy to the people. Yet the Pharisees, the enemies of God, pastors that call themselves, pastors that, that does not even know they are left from their right, they say it's witchcraft. These are the Pharisees. Is it because they call them Pharisees? These people are also the pastors that we are seeing today that call themselves, that are condemning miracles. So God, the, the, the Bible does call them Pharisees. But me, I call them pastors because today, there is pastors that Satan is just using like that. I'm not talking of pastors that God called. Because by the pastor that God called, when even, even, if, even if you are not doing miracles in your church, when they want to talk against anointed man of God, you will shut them up. You say, shut up. Because it's the, it's the same spirit. You, 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 you will feel it. You will not want anybody to talk against. You know? Look at the Pharisees. Jesus said, so everything that I've been doing, miracles that you people condemn, get ready. Such sin cannot be forgiven. So if you are in the business of condemning servants of God that are doing miracles, because you cannot do it, everyone cannot perish. Everyone cannot be dying a slide of a, with, with, with a slide of headache. Anyone cannot be dying with, with fever. Everyone cannot be dying a, a, be, be having sleepless night because of so, a sexual molestation or eating in their dream. No, they need to run to a servant of God for deliverance. So if you cannot do it, does not mean everyone has to suffer it. What you don't have does not mean somebody else will not have it. What kind of what, what what kind of you as a pastor? Is it everything you have? Or is it everything? There are some things that you that is talking negatively. There are some things you have, somebody else don't have it. When it comes to material wealth. Maybe you have you have a, a good shoe. Maybe another pastor don't even have a good shoe. So for the fact that you have a you, uh, uh, you have a good shoe does not mean that another pastor has to be condemning your shoe that you have. That is what life is all about. So, many pastors today are suffering. Many homes today are destroyed because of what they are saying. And the worst of all, they can't lay hand on where their problem is coming from. They cannot lay hand on it. They will say it's, it's, one, it's one witch from their village. Or it's one uh, thing. I want. No, no, no. You are suffering because of the blasphemy. Look at what the Bible says, verse 31. Everything you do against anything can be forgiven. But the blasphemy against God is doing miracle through his servant. And you say that miracle is fake. You say that miracle is from Bezebok. Bezebok spirit. You say that miracle is from the devil. Who is devil to do miracle? Who is Satan to do miracle? I'm here to quote you wrong today. You pastors that are saying that miracles, Satan does not do miracles. Satan does not do miracles. Satan does not heal. It does not heal. It doesn't matter how we pretend to do it. It does not heal. All powers on earth and in heavens belong to God. And it's to change lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, verse 32, And whoso speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whoso speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him. Neither in this world, Ha. Neither in this world, neither in the world to come. This is another, this is again, this is again God is talking. This is again God is talking. 31, 32. He said, not in this world, the work of the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you, when a person is healed in the church, it is the work of the Holy Spirit. When a person that is blind came to the church, the servant of God pray and the person can see. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. When a person is oppressed by the devil, he can't sleep in the night. And the person came to the church. And the servant of God pray and do deliverance for the person. And cast out that devil of darkness that make that person not to sleep. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. No pastor has power of his own. Every miracle you see in the deliverance ministry, they are purely the works of the Holy Spirit. And that is why God said, that is why God said, 
Jesus said that anyone that blasphemes against the works, look, let me show it to you. And whoso speaketh a word, whoso speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven. It means if you speak against Jesus, Jesus said he will forgive you. If you insult Jesus, Jesus said he will forgive you. But whoso speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him. Neither in this world, neither in the world to come, it cannot be forgiven you. What is the work of the Holy Ghost? All the miracles you are condemning, all the miracles you are saying that is witchcraft power, all the miracles that you are saying is not a genuine power, that is the work of the Holy Ghost that you are condemning. Jesus is telling you today that he will never forgive you and he will not forgive your generation, not in this world and next world to come. You cannot be forgiven. So you can see that it is a serious affair. So anyone that wants to talk, keep talking. You are only heaping causes upon your life and upon your children and your generation. You are just loading. You are loading. You are loading every time. Every time you speak against the servant of God that carries power, you are just loading. You are loading your, 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 your downfall. You are loading it. You are loading it. You are just loading it. You are loading your downfall. You are loading your debt. You are loading your poverty. You are loading. You are loading failure for life. It's not my word. Please read it. I'm not making cause on anybody because I have no right to do so. Let me read it for you again so that you know. Don't not say, Pastor Eunice, ah, that Pastor. Said, no, 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 no. I don't do that. I don't do that. I read the word of God. Let me read it. Matthew chapter twelve, verse thirty-two. And also speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. Against the Son of Man. You can speak against the pastor, God will forgive you. You can speak against Jesus, God will forgive you. You can speak against God, God will forgive you. That is against the Son of Man. He said, but whoso speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall never be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. God will not forgive you. Every miracle in the church is of the Holy Spirit. There is no pastor that has power to do miracle on his own. There is no power. There is no pastor. Everything is orchestrated and given by the Holy Spirit. So when you begin to condemn it, when you begin to say it's witchcraft power, death threat, that's why you see many people today. Many of their children is like imbecile. You see many people today. They are like, they have all what it takes to make life that is not working. You see many people today, you know, they, they, they will be pastor today, tomorrow they will be a member. Next tomorrow they will go back to pastor, the other day they will be a member. They, you know, they, they are just fluctuating. They are just fluctuating. They are not, you know, yo-yo, yo-yo, up and down, up and down, because they are reaping, the Bible says, as you begin to talk against the servant of God that are operating miracle, with, without miracle, how can, how, can, how can people bring glory to God? If somebody, who doctors say, that is having HIV, that is going to die, if that person died, would that bring glory to God? No. But when that person goes to the church, and a servant of God that carries power, pray. Oh, you don't know that HIV is a demonic spirit? And cast out that spirit behind that HIV in the name of Jesus Christ. You spirit that causes this HIV, go in the name of Jesus. And that spirit leave that person. And if the person is free, don't you know that it brings glory to God? It brings glory to God. It brings glory to God. That is why God is equipping his people, the people that he call he equip them. He equip them for signs and miracles. So that people will believe. The Bible says the world is eagerly waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. The world is eagerly waiting. People are waiting for the manifestation of the power of God. You think God is going to come down to do that? No. God is going to use you as a pastor. The whole world is waiting. They are eagerly waiting for the manifestation. Of the power of God through the servants of God. So if God is showing his demonstration through his servant healing the sick, doing all kind of miracle, you will say it's witchcraft power. You will say it's witchcraft power. Because you have big mouth, because you have bad, 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 bad intentions, because you 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 you, you, you have evil mind, evil mind. That evil mind, go and use it on witch doctors. That evil might go and use it on the kingdom of darkness and leave the servants of God alone. Anyway, that is not for me to tell you because you already carry courses. Read the word of God. You already carry courses. So just keep doing it. Just keep doing it. 
Your children, they are there to reap. Your children, children. Because God said you can't. He said he will not forgive you in this world and in the world to come. So it means that all your generation, they will go through that course. <laughs> so you better, you, you, you better be, 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 be doing something about it now. That's why you see many pastors now, they are running to scatter. You know, going for apology. I praise those pastors and I dock my car for them. I love you. Pastors that are going to go and, uh, uh, you know, to reconcile with pastors that you have spoken against. Because you can't eat your cake and have it. Hallelujah. Now, the last verse. But I say unto you that every idle word that men speak, they shall give account, therefore, in judgment. For by your words, you shall be justified. By your words, you shall be condemned. Hallelujah. Glory be to God Almighty. Glory be to God. So we can see. We can see. Amen. We can see from this passage that, <laughs> you know, condemnation, condemning of miracles started right from the time of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It started. Amen. So if you are a servant of God, if people are not challenging your miracle, it means that your miracle is not a genuine one. It means that you are not called by God. Because Jesus was challenged. The Pharisees, they said he was casting out devil by witchcraft power. They said he was casting out devil by... So, the Bible says, as Christ is, so are we. Equality of everything. So, if Jesus suffered persecution, you also will suffer persecution. So, if you are a pastor, everyone is just liking you. The things you are doing in your church, everyone is liking, and everybody is dancing and doing It means that you are like them, is the same. Because the Bible says, a house divided against itself cannot stand. So if the kingdom of darkness, if the members of your church, many of them, they are from all courts, they are from all kinds of all courts, they fool your church. And you are doing this together, they are not challenging your authority, they are not challenging what, you know, the, 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 the miracles that are going on in your church, or they are not challenging you, they are just comfortable, it's because you are like them. So they can't challenge you. Why would they challenge you? You are not a threat to them. You are not a threat to their kingdom. So why would they challenge you? Why would they challenge you? Then let them come to a church that is a threat to them. They will say, don't go to that church. That church is using witchcraft power. Then you that is speaking, because you have big mouth, get ready. Get ready. Get ready. You are just loading your suffering. You are just loading. Suffering for your children and children's children. It's loading. By the time it's full, you begin to get the repercussion of what you are saying against the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. May the Almighty God bless all of us today. And like I told you, we are destroying the spirit of Bezebok. Get ready now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. By the authority vested in the name of Jesus Christ. Every spirit of Bezebok, every spirit of the devil, every spirit that has been oppressing you, that has been deceiving you, that has been making you not to get favor from God. I command those spirits in the name of Jesus Christ. Cut fire by the blood of Jesus. Cut fire in the name of Jesus Christ. You spirit of Bezebel that is inhabiting the people, that is filling the heart of the people, that is making the people not to know the only one and true God, confusing the mind of the people, misdirecting their life and destiny. Today, anywhere you are, in the life of everyone that is watching me today, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I command the fire of God to locate that spirit. Be destroyed forever permanently in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, of Nazareth. Let the favor of God go with you. Let the power of God go with you. Today, you are delivered. For whosoever the Son of God set free is free indeed. Now that you are delivered, receive your breakthrough. Receive the power of God. Receive the anointing of God. Receive your children. Receive your babies in the womb. Receive your prosperity. Receive long life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Receive all what you have been believing God for. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Holy Ghost power disgrace. The the, 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 the power of delay in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every power of delay in your life today, let the blood of Jesus Christ locate them and destroy them completely from your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak into your life from today that you will not, nothing will be delayed for you anymore. Anything you want from today, get it speedily in the mighty name of Jesus. Anything good. Anything good that you want from today, get it speedily in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May the good Lord bless you all. May the good Almighty, may the good Lord Almighty God keep you all and 
uh, take you all to the next level in lives in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Shalom.